Do you want to go get something to drink? I'm scared. Can I get fresh with you? Are you ready? Mm. Are you ready? Mm. Welcome back to our channel, Purposely Rerouted, where we take you along for whatever it is we're doing in Florida. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany. I'm David. <laughs> And today we are talking about Hello Screams and why we love it so much. Well, we went to Hello Screams at the beginning of the month. Um, actually, it was in September. Mm -hmm. We went in September. Opening weekend, we went. Um, but we went with family. We had Dave's dad and stepmom with us. And because of that, you know, we, we just go to experience the park. And uh, we didn't really talk that much about the event. But we have gone for the past three years. So we just kind of wanted to hop on here. You still have time. October is not over yet. The event is running until October 31st. So... Let's talk about why we love Hallow Scream so much. We don't want to compare Hallow Screams to Halloween Horror Nights because there really is no comparison. You can't really compare the two events. Universal with Halloween Horror Nights has a much bigger budget. They've been doing it for absolute years. You know, they have costume designers, they have professional makeup artists. So they have a much, it's a much larger scale than Hallow Screams. Mm -hmm. And SeaWorld and Busch Gardens both do Hello Screams. Busch Gardens has been doing Hello Screams for years in Tampa Bay and also in Williamsburg, Virginia. Yep. But SeaWorld jumped on that train and they have been doing Hello Screams for three, three years. Three years. And they're doing a pretty good job because it's definitely one of my favorite events. So we wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about um, Hello Screams. There is five houses at the SeaWorld location, SeaWorld Orlando, and you have seven scare zones. They have specialty bars. Mm -hmm. They also have specialty food, specialty drinks. And that's one of the things that we enjoy is some of those specialty <laughs> items that you can only get at events like this. Yes. And they usually, they do bring back some fav favorites. Like if they get a lot of really good feedback from their guest on a certain item, they may bring that back year after year. But for the most part, it's it's different every year. Their drinks were the same this year. They did have a few drinks, I think, that are a little bit different. Universal used to have like the exclusive on the Lacto Cooler sour beer that Dave really likes, but SeaWorld also- Has it now. Has that now. Um, so Universal has a little bit of competition there. But we do really like getting the, the food and the drinks and trying mm -hmm. those, because there's not it's not something that you can get all throughout the year. We also like it because it's a different way to be able to enjoy SeaWorld's park. They do only have part of the park open for the Hello Screams event, but they do have, I think it's five roller coasters that they have. I know they have Mako, um, Manta, Icebreaker, Pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that might be it. Mako, yeah. Manta. Yeah, because Kraken, I don't think, that, that's is, on the left side of the yeah, park. Yeah, Kraken so is in not, the part of the park that they don't have open for the Hallow Screams. I think so it's, it's those four. four. Mm -hmm. And it is weather permitting, so, you know, you are in Florida, and it is rainy season when this event goes on, so just be aware of that. Take you a poncho, take you an umbrella, but just be aware that if it is raining, even if it's not thundering and lightning, just raining, they are, or they're going to close those roller coasters during the rain. We also like the interaction with the scare actors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's my f probably one of my favorite parts about this event because, I mean, they, they you know, they get up close and personal with you. There have been times where I will make comments to them and they'll comment back, they'll respond, and sometimes they will follow you and talk with you and try to creep you out type of thing. But, you know, they're just very interactive with you and I think they do it to try to set themselves apart from some of the other Halloween venues around town and I think they do a really good job at doing that. The scare actors at um, Halloween Horror Nights, they're actually told, you know, they, they cannot interact with you, they cannot pose for pictures, um, they can't, you know, interact in conversation with you because they're told that they need to keep that flow of traffic moving and since Hello Scream is on a much, much smaller scale now, I mean, in the future, it may be, it may get as big as Halloween Horror Nights, here's hoping. But um, for now, they are able to, you know, stop 
pose for pictures and interact with you a little bit more than scare actors at, at Halloween Horror Nights is going to be able to interact mm -hmm. with you. And the price point for Hollow Scream is you just can't beat it. It's, yeah. it's, it's just a heck of a bang for the buck for sure when you compare it to some of the other local venues. Yes, and I have my computer here, so I am going to be looking a little bit at the computer to kind of tell you a little bit about those. Like for right right now, say if you're not a pass holder or anything um, and you're buying tickets right now, the tickets are only $48.99. And I mean, Hall Halloween Horror Nights tickets are well over $100 a person. Not including the Express Pass. Mm -hmm. And at Hollow Scream, you don't need an Express Pass. Yeah, so far, I mean, we've, we've been three years. This was the first year that we were able to go through all five houses because, let's be honest, I'm a scaredy cat. And um, this was the first year that we went through all of the houses at Hallow Screams, and that was my fault the years past because I, I was too scared to go through the houses. We were able to get through all five houses with no problem. And still have plenty of time to do other things. Yes. If you want to go to SeaWorld.com, they have all of the details about the tickets because there's lots of different tickets that they have available. We did visit a few of the specialty bars. Mm -hmm. What did you think about those? I got the same thing to drink at every one of them. So I think the bars themselves with the employees, because they are allowed to dress the part as well. And I think that you know, that their outfits were very, very good. I got the same drink at every bar, so I kept the it. Yeah, the light cooler. <laughs> yeah, so I kept it pretty boring, pretty consistent. And I, I do see online one thing that people really miss about Halloween Horror Nights is the girls walking around with the blood bag drinks, and they do have that at Hello Scream, so be aware of that too. If you are one of those people out there that really miss Halloween, Halloween Horror Nights, having those blood bag girls selling the blood bag drinks, they do have them. Oh, they do. What we're going to do here, because I have my nifty little reading glasses on and I can read the descriptions of the houses, and Dave's going to actually talk about what he thought of the house. Because to be quite honest with you, I ran through those houses so fast, screamed my head off with my mother in law, Marsha, and I don't really remember as much of the house as Dave does. I remember little bits and pieces. Also, wanted to let you guys know that um, there was only one new house at Hollow Screams this year. All of the other houses are returning houses, but some of the houses, they kind of reimagined them. So with Blood Beckoning and Neglected and Ignored Borough Forgotten by Society, um, they are going to take all of their less fortunate, sick, and homeless. They're sent to this area of this imaginary city to live out their remaining days. Out of sight, out of mind. Once worshipped immortals, now shunned and forced into the rotting scourge, feeding on the blood of the lost and distressed in this urban kingdom. Not only do you have forgotten, homeless, sick people, you also have like monsters too. And when you first get to the house in the queue, like before you get into the house, there is a guy that is walking around and he is drinking. Um, so he does look as if he's homeless. It was a good start to a queue when we got into the house It had some pretty good detail and it had all of the items in the house that she had mentioned about You know a dilapidated city um, You could see where it was um, just a poor area um, And it didn't have as many scare actors as I would have liked to have seen uh, and I think maybe because this was the first house that we went into, so it was still early in the night, so I don't know if everyone was in place to do what they needed to do, but overall it was a good house and they had some good jump scares. Um, I didn't think the, the theming once inside the house was as good as what it was outside, in my yeah. opinion, in the queue, um, but all in all it was a good house. It was a good house, I think, to get started off with, to get to kind of get you in that, that mood to go through some of these houses. The only thing that I really remember about the house was the guy in the front drinking something in a container. It was probably sweet tea. That's what it looked like. <laughs> but, but he said it was rum. He wouldn't give me a sip. <laughs> yeah, Dave asked him if he would give him a sip of what he was drinking. He said, oh, you don't want none of this. That's what he said. This is too strong. <laughs> 
So the next house that we went into was Captain's Revenge, and this is one house that we had been into mm -hmm. last before. year or the year before. Um, and it was, it's also a returning house. Um, they didn't reimagine this at all. It was the same house. The only thing different this year mm -hmm. is you enter where the exit was last year. So we were kind of confused about that. Lifting shanties and tales of untold fortune have lured you aboard this ship. The serenity you once knew has been drowned out by the echoes of howling winds and crashing waves. Darkness is here and the vessel belongs to her vengeance. You may just find yourself in a permanent part. You may just find yourself a permanent part of this crew, driven mad and cursed by the treasure, and doomed to face the fury of the sea. And as she mentioned, this year you do go into the well. What used to be the exit is now the entrance. And when we did walk into the house, one thing new this year as well was there was a scare actor on like a bungee, a retractable, retractable bungee cord thing where they yes, would jump off the box and then hit the ground kind of right in front of you and it would fling them back onto the box that they were standing on. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're tall, you can see where, those, where, where that guy was. So I saw him, but if you're shorter, it's gonna be a lot harder to see the top of his head. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this house is pretty much, it's constructed like a boat, like you're going inside of the boat. And when, once you're inside the boat, you do hear the waves, you hear the creaking of the boat as if it was on the ocean. You hear him um, sword rocking. fighting. You hear him sword fighting. There's a lot of jump scares in this house with captains. Um, and overall, it was a really, I thought it was a really good house. So at this point, it was house number two, but at this point it was my favorite house. And I think for the night, my dad said that this house was his favorite. The next house after that, that we went into was Dead Vines Nolan's Nightmare. This is a reimagined house, pretty much the same concept, but they just reimagined some things inside of it. Last year, it was just strictly Dead Vines, and this year they put the New Orleans spin on it. From deep in the gator field, Louisiana bayous, through its grand estates with dark backstories and decaying cemeteries, all the way to the wild antics of Bourbon Street. Your journey through this myriad of horrors will be nothing less than a constant nightmare. An ominous presence protects this land from those not welcome. You can't go back, you must press on. Now this house, as she mentioned, is a returning house, and this was the third house that we went in. And in my opinion, this house was the most, had the most detail. Um, when you walk in, um, it, it does have a lot of I don't say twist and turns, but you walk in and you turn to, let's say, the left, and then you're turning to the right, and then you're turning like to the amazed. left. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. And of course, it's a lot of, um, it gives you that swampy feel with um, just a lot of brush or a lot of plants, um, a lot they of things have all like those that. sounds pumped in yeah. too. Yeah, and there's like a lot the of. Bayou sounds. Yeah, there's a lot of, I don't want to say noise, but music, but like she said, bayou sounds in there. I think that house had probably the most hidden scare actors. Like you see something out of the corner of your eye and you're like, oh no, that's just a plant, but it's actually a scare actor. Yeah, dressed up like a plant. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it was, they weren't as noticeable as they were in the first two houses. So I think they did a really good job with that house as far as theming and the detail of everything inside of the house was probably my favorite. And then the next house that we went to was Beneath the Ice Meltdown. And they listed this as a new house, but they did have Beneath the Ice the, for the last two years. This one, I would say, is just a reimagined house. Everybody kept saying online and telling us that it was probably the scariest house that they had at Hallow Screams. Zombies frozen in ice. But this year, they... <laughs> they weren't frozen this year. Yeah, this year it's the meltdown. <laughs> so this year... All that ice is melted and um, they did put the siren spin on it too. So the synopsis of Beneath the Ice Meltdown. During frost, and frost is one of the sirens, during frost attack on this Arctic research facility, the scientists along with a special government task force were able to engage in defense. The battle was fierce, but the ice siren was captured and contained. The facility is destroyed and many of the crew members have been killed or turned into mindless minions. Frost's cries for help echoed through the frozen mountains only to be heard by her twin sister, Flame, 
who immediately comes to her rescue. The few defenders that are still alive will soon be facing the scorching wrath of the fire siren as she burns through the facility to rescue her icy twin. Now, this house, being the fourth house that we went to, um, this one, in my opinion, was probably the longest house to go through, which... I thought it was never going to end. Yeah, it, it. I liked it. I mean, I, I really, really enjoyed it. You would have, like, sounds pumped in of, like, water dripping or, like, you know, droplet hitting a puddle, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you had areas of the house where it felt a lot colder than others. Um, this particular house had the most scare actors out of all five houses that we went in. Um, so it was a really, really good house. I kind of felt like every which way you turned, there was someone there to try to scare you or or scare you, get you. Um, but yeah, this one was probably, to this point, my favorite. And the last house that we went into was the new house that they did have this year. And this house is called Delirium 666 Laboratories. Welcome to the headquarters of a unique mercenary group, an organization established by the government to counter the threat passed by the sirens and the dangerous sea and other dangerous sea creatures. While these creatures are typically unseen in human occupied territories, recent attack on humans at the surface necessitate a swift resolution. The public has been invited to tour the facility to gain support and to understand. You will be transported to the bottom of an undersea elevator. Rest assured you will not be alone on your journey. A designated task force is in place to oversee your safety. What could possibly go wrong? Now, this house Spoiler alert, save the best for last because this house was the best of all five. When you walked in, you did have a young lady that greeted you. Um, it was almost it, like you were walking, walking into, into a hotel, a hotel yeah. lobby. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. And then all of a sudden you get into this elevator, you're in there with a military individual task force and everything's closed off and you do feel as if you're being transported somewhere. You don't, I mean, obviously you don't feel that you're going down, up or to the left or to the right, but you do feel as if you're going somewhere. Then you are let out of this elevator and then you are basically pushed through this house by the task force. Um, and while at the same token, you are getting scared by scare actors and you're being rushed through by the task force to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Yeah, I mean, they're yelling at you like, come on, come on, come on, come on, Yeah, it, come it's on, almost on. like they want you to run. So this was the perfect house for her and Marsha. Um, <laughs> So, and, and, and this house was just themed really good. It didn't have a whole lot of detail in it, but it was just a well-themed house. And I mm -hmm. think the very end of it is the best part because I feel <laughs> as if, you know, you're walking up like an aisle. It's a ramp, but it's through a tunnel and you definitely are going and up. the tunnel is spinning. It's lit and it's spinning around and around and around. So if you've had a few drinks, it... It, you feel you, like you're moving. You feel very <laughs> awkward um, yes. trying to walk up this tunnel and out of your, the house. Your equilibrium is, is very, very shaken up. Very. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those houses that I think was um, just the best of the best because it had just the best of everything and it was just super fun. Um, <laughs> if I had you know a little bit more to drink, I probably you know would have struggled getting up that tunnel or getting through that tunnel, but... Um, yeah, this this was definitely my favorite house. Yeah, I definitely got dizzy, but I think the funniest part was when we looked back and <laughs> Dave, st Dave stepmom, Marsha, was she was like holding on the was rail like holding on and to like the pulling, rail up, pulling and on the pull rail like it's a rope to get out of the tunnel. Yeah, that, that was pretty funny. And we did go through all of the scare zones except for one. Um, we won't talk about the scare zones because we don't want to give away all of the details of the events, but the um, the scare zones are really good, too. Yeah, I think this, the favorite part of the event for me, I think, are the scare zones. I, they're just super fun. They're, yeah. They're super fun. I mean, the, the costumes are not elaborate, nothing like HHN, but just the interaction that you get with the scare actors there, it's... It's just the whole event, in my opinion, is just well worth it. And you can look at it like this. If you spend $50 for a ticket, essentially you're paying $10 per house and you're getting to go through all the scare zones for free. Um, if you factor all the scare zones in with it, I mean, you're talking less than, you know, $5 to go through scare zones and houses. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just think it's a really good bargain um, and it's something different, something fun to do if you are into the whole spooky season as we are. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I did want to talk a little bit about something that they did have that was new this year that they have not had for the past two years. And that is a um, Hello Scream food and drink lanyard. They have two different types of lanyards that you can purchase for the specialty food and drink that they have at Hello Screams. One lanyard is $40 and that is going to give you three full-size drinks and one food item of your choice at any of the special, specialty bars or specialty food booths. And then they have a second lanyard that's a little bit more pricey, but you do get more with it. It's $75 per person. And with that one, you can receive five five full-size drinks and two specialty food items so i think that's a pretty good yeah um, and if you're a pass holder you value. get your pass holder discount off of that so it's even less yes but that is uh one new thing that they did this year i hope that they do decide to bring those back next year the lanyards yes we have not been to hello screams at bush gardens yet we hope to in maybe... tampa we have in williamsburg Yes, we have in Williamsburg, but we haven't in Tampa, so we hope to try to go maybe next year. Yeah, this year we just got too much to do. Yeah. But I did forget to mention earlier when I was talking about value for the dollar between scare zones and the houses and what you pay for the ticket. Now keep in mind, you can also ride all those rides. If you're not into the houses or scare zones, all the rides that are open, you can ride. Yes, and because it's a special ticketed event, you're basically going to walk onto all of those four coasters. If you're a coaster person, they are pretty intense coasters. Let me just say that. They are awesome. Icebreaker is probably the least intense out of the four, but Pipeline, Mako, and Manta are pretty intense coasters. I mean, Bush Gardens and SeaWorld um, in Florida are pretty much known for their mm -hmm. coasters. coasters. Kraken's probably the best on property. But, but that one's not open nope. for Hello Scream, so don't even mention that one. If you are visiting Orlando in the Halloween spooky season, I think it's a great thing for you to add to your itinerary. Mm -hmm. And we also have a couple shows, too, if you're into that. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the shows. Um, this year, we were not able to see any of the shows because we only went to Hello Screams one night this year. We did see the one with the sirens. Yes. Um, like Monster Stomp, and we, we didn't catch that. But There was a new show at the, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's like the little lagoon area where they have the pearls in SeaWorld. There was a new show there, and it's, it's I wouldn't really even call it a show. Um, you're sitting and watching, like, the siren story, how the sirens came to be. We didn't, I, I caught the very tail end of that one. We did see Monster Stomp last year, mm -hmm. and it is awesome it is a show that you don't want to miss if you have time for it and uh, siren song is basically a show that they do I think they do it three times during the event mm -hmm. and it's outside um, so lots of people mm -hmm. can partake in that show because it's it's uh, in the whole area where icebreaker is mm -hmm. and altitude burgers it's it's in front of that so yeah for that price point you get shows you get houses, you get scare zones, you get coasters. specialty bars, and you get coasters. Mm -hmm. All for the small fee of $48.99. Well, you don't get anything from the bar included in that. Well, yeah, but. you have to pay for the drinks and the food if you eat and drink. But That is why we like Hello Scream so much and why we will continue to go every Halloween. Mm -hmm. Boo. You want to end it out here? Boo. <laughs> so as always, guys, if you liked this video and you want to see more from us, give us a thumbs up. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment. And we didn't even mention that we have a new a new backdrop. We spookied it up for, for our Halloween talk, but we created a new backdrop to mm -hmm. do our sit-down videos. We can change the color of the lights and change the scenery. We can do that. So we'll see you in the next one. Later. <laughs> How long is it? Oh my god, you done broke the camera. <laughs>